started the timer a little bit late, but that time should be accurate. Um, so it looks like Robin ended up being the first player. Oh, no. Am I wrong? Was it Eric that ended up being the first player? Yeah, sorry. No, yeah, you're Robin's first player. Okay, yeah, that's right. So then uh, he chose Solar Corona from Eric's objectives, which means that Robin's going to have to deploy all his stuff first. Eric's going to get to choose a side of the board that is the Corona, and are we going to have a... We're we gonna have that special Corona today. No, let's put the card on the okay. side. That's from. <laughs> um, I deleted the graphic, sadly. Are you, okay, I thought I saw it in the Dropbox. I know. I well, it's no, it's probably still there. Okay, we'll see. I deleted it from the overlay. Man, and it's summer too. All right. Oh, whatever. It's fine. Uh, actually, honestly, I wasn't even expecting it to see that ever again because I don't. I don't think I, Solar Corona is a very popular. Well, they're, objective. Well, they both are running Solar Corona, so. Oh, okay. On their list, so. Three intel officers on all those light cruisers. It's going to give Robin a headache. Now, <clears throat> fortunately for him, he, he has, he's picked two ships that have multiple um, defense tokens of the same type. So it's not going to be as bad for him as, say, if he had like a uh, MC-80 assault cruiser, like the Super Pickle, some kind of Akbar list or something like that. With all the rocks deployed, looks like Robin's going to deploy on the left side of the board. Uh, he's going to keep his MC-80 on the, the far side uh, as a flanker. Of course, that's, pr that's going to be the fastest ship of his, deceptively mobile with the engine techs. And his plan, I suppose, is going to uh, barrel down the board and then turn in hard, come in at the side of Eric's list. And, uh, yep, next to it is the... Next to, next to the MC-80 is going to be the MC-30 Torpedo Frigate, the two flotillas. I suspect the four fighters will be deployed closer to the center of the board so they can engage Eric's uh, fleet a lot sooner. But ultimately, I'm not sure if they're going to play as big a role as uh, they would in against the list that had more fighters. Looks like Robin decided to set all his ships at speed 2. It's probably going to give him the most control. Most likely uh, command for all of them is probably going to be uh, navigate. It's unclear whether or not Eric is going to uh, set up his Architans in a kiting formation or if he's just going to, like uh, Devil John said, uh, rush at Robin's list and try to take out the Liberty and the MC-80 torpedo, for, sorry, the MC-30 as quickly as possible. This seems like it makes it very easy for Eric to set up with the Corona, favoring all of his ships. Yeah, it looks like the Corona is probably going to end up on the right side of the board based on the way Eric's deploying his stuff. And this is a very interesting formation because it's they're all, everything's so close together. Uh, looks like the looks like the Solar Corona actually yeah does end up being on the right side of the board as predicted which means that when Robin starts turning towards the right and he starts firing at Eric's ships, uh, very likely that his arcs will be facing the Solar Corona. Now, while everything is tightly packed, we have to remember that Eric is running Moff Jurjarod, and with Moff Jurjarod, you can pull some crazy maneuvers with right. not only Architons, but also the ISD. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, Robin and uh, Eric are just like, okay, so you use a strategic advisor, right? I use a strategic advisor. Okay, cool. Good talk. And now we'll actually begin to move our ships. Nav Command, the uh, command for the Ahsoka GR-75, takes it as a token, and it's going to barrel, well, barrel forward at speed two. I think he's just trying to make sure if he, to not go into oh, range of that Oh, he ends up spinning the token. Right yep. away and just reducing the speed. One of the things he's going to need to be careful now that the GR-75 has slowed down, if he plans on turning the rest of his fleet towards the center of the board, that he hasn't created a traffic jam with the slower moving GR-75 getting in the way of everything else. So passes the token over to the ISD, yep. the Navigate token. Yeah, that was from the Gazanti, right? Yes. Yeah. And we, we talked about this a minute ago, activating the Gazanti, where does that leave the Architans? Now with, with Jurjarod, 
he does have options. But if that Gazanti goes straight, and it looks like it's going at... I can't... Okay, he might be going at speed two and doing an inside turn. Nope, he's at speed three. And now we see actually that he's opened up a lane for his Architans. His yes. Architans can still go in a straight line and not run into anything and still give room for Architans number three and the ISD to, uh, to make their moves. So Leia's going to move forward one, <coughs> hits one of the squadrons. Leia Organa is the uh, emergency stop button for big ships. Um, if you've predicted w wrong what your opponent is going to do, you can always use her to change the top dial of, of any of your other ships when you reveal it. Another navigate command by, I believe it's an Architans. Yeah, I think it's the number four Architans. So Robin and I have this little mini game that we play whenever we play uh, Armada Skirmishes. It's basically, <laughs> on, the on turn number one, if you have to proxy anything, you lose the game. <laughs> Because almost always, you put all your squadrons in front of your big ship, and then you just gotta like put a bunch of rulers down to placehold everything while you move your guy one forward. So he uses the navigate dial. Yep. That's the extra click of maneuverability. Yeah, he gets that extra click at speed one with the maneuver dial. And barrels forward with his Architans. Depending depending on what uh, Robin does with his MC-30, he could very well end up in the long range of uh, the Architans. Yeah, in the long range of the Architans, uh, number four. Robin with uh, Navigate Command on his uh, MC-30. Takes it as a token. Of course, Navigate, in almost all cases, should be the only uh, command you should be giving to your MC-30. And with that maneuver, he may he may actually be in long range now of his Architans. With that so. with that knowledge, actually, uh, Eric can now, uh, if he's dialed in navigate commands for Architans number two and three, he can speed them all up, and have them all um, threaten their firepower against the the uh, MC30. So here comes a navigate command, probably on another Architans from Eric. And now this is interesting. I think he's actually is he actually attempting to. Uh, to put the MC-30 into a crossfire. Now turning his turning his Architans like that, I don't think you can do that if you don't want to run over the rock. Uh, turning his Architans like that is going to give uh, give Robin <laughs> a large front arc in which to hide in right. until that Architans turns again. So he may elect to do a slower turn, uh, give himself more time to react. Uh, but also, yeah, slow down. Uh, this way, he can probably use Jerry next turn in, comp in conjunction with a navigate to command to uh, to dodge that rock. Liberty now with the navigate command. I think, yeah, I think what I would do, um, I would engine tech and then just swing a little bit out to the left and then come in uh, hard back into the right. See if I can take out that Architans. Sure. We keep a, saying we keep term. saying Liberty, but it's the Mon Karen, right? Yeah, but I mean the Liberty is the colloquial term for all the uh, all right. the MC eighty whatever you call them. It's just like everybody, how everybody calls a Gladiator a Demolisher, even if it doesn't have the Demolisher yeah, title on it. If you even if you t if you talk to a casual Star Wars nerd and you called something, oh yeah yeah, the Mon Karen's my favorite ship. I don't know if anyone would know what you're talking about. Oh no, that's fair enough. I'm just saying because it is actually a title. Yeah. It might be a little bit misleading. We had a guy in our local playgroup who called Gazantis Gaznatis for a really long time. Oh. I didn't bother correcting him because I thought it was funny. That'd be funny for a while. I think it would make me a little crazy after, after a bit. So ISD with the nav command. He already has a token, so he's going to use the dial. I still can't tell who uh, Eric's first target is. He, he might actually still be... Okay, well, with that maneuver, it seems like it's going to be the, M the Mon Karen. But... Um, you know, also, also not not committing to any one target is uh, leaves your options open as well. Finding a way to squeeze. I don't know if he has space to squeeze him in at uh, his full movement. Yeah. 
So Eric's going to have to use Jirajirad to make that maneuver because he had a bandit as first click, which the it's Eric a very can't tight do. formation. But now I, I kind of see um, I kind of see Eric's plan for, formulating here. So one one of the first activations uh, might be his ISD next turn. Well, he can actually so. When he moves his ISD, I, I feel like he's going to juke hard to its right, and then, like, he's going to do a nav command, juke hard to its right, so it's basically traveling in a straight line for the first couple of joints, and then turn in, so that now his front is facing the sides of both the Mon Karen and the MC-30, if that's uh, something that people at home can visualize. And I actually do like this, this uh, setup by Eric. He's created a versatile kill box that he can use to focus on either the MC-30 or the Mon Karen. Robin checking the, the maximum flak distance of that ISD so he doesn't take any un unnecessary shots on the squadrons. I think hit, the smart idea here is just hang him back, let Eric come to him, and then use him to support the, uh, the two ships when he starts going after what seems to be probably the ISD. Also looks like the both the big ships are out of, just out of range of each other. Robin's going to be forced to make the first move into the front arc, though, of the ISD. So what are the two ships that Eric's going to lead till the end for optimal firing? So it's an ISD-2, right, that Eric yes. has? I would say it would be the ISD and maybe Architons number three would be the two ships he'll leave until the end. Conversely, if he really cares about activation advantage, he may uh, hold off on his Gazanti until the very end as well, so it doesn't get smeared by the Mon Karen. Trying for a block here? Or at least um, a denial of... No, I, yeah, maybe. I mean, I think he's also trying to bank on, uh, bank on the hope that the Mon Karen is within the Solar Corona. Because this move doesn't make a lot of sense otherwise. It's, he's not in the Solar Corona? No. Ooh, boy. That's what, that's what we're doing the Pew Pew lasers for? I mean, they're trying to draw, but I mean, if you look from the corner, yeah. it's pretty clearly. They may, they're having some yeah. difficulty making a judgment, so. The, well, the, I mean, that's where you call a judge over, and then yeah. that person makes a judge call. So, so with that being the case, actually, I think maybe I... I, mean, we, I guess we have the tape measure. We could, uh, yeah. we could oh, that's do it true. in actual official official <laughs> if yes. uh, they, they were good comes to that. But. Leia's going to be uh, Robin's next activation. Nav command passing it over to the Mon Karen with the comsnet ability. Robin also pondering on slowing down his Leia ship so as not to get creamed by the ISD. And Eric uh, uses his chooses this moment to use his strategic advisor. Oh, sorry. Okay, that, so the, uh, that's the I missed the beginning of the round. They, Robin uses so strategic it, yeah. It looks like Robin uses strategic okay. advisor first, which is why Eric uh, activated, first. activated first, quote unquote. And so after that, that's when after he activated his Leia. <coughs> yeah, so, Eric. Sorry, just yeah, yeah. So yeah. Robin used it at the beginning of the round. Eric uses strategic advisor now. Yeah, after his Gazanti activation. So then now Robin's using his Ahsoka. Mm, still out of range of the of the MC30. So begging a concentrate fire on number three. Yeah, and here here's where you see the versatility of the Jerry's Architons. That that damage does add up, unfortunately, but. In the meantime, he's going to get uh, what seems like a really, uh, really good angle on the the MC30. Yeah, he he wants to manage his range carefully because he, he knows that the he knows that that ship is going to the MC30 is going to activate. Uh, the, yeah, the MC30 hasn't activated yet, right? No, neither yeah, are the bigger ships. Right. Maybe he's trying to create like a honey trap or, or honey pot or something, but uh, yeah, I mean, Robin can't, Robin can't be afraid to commit anymore. I think that with these series of moves, Eric has created a very good kill box.
We're going back and we're conducting the same maneuver from the legal side. Or are we adjusting the maneuver now? Oh, no. We're going to do the same maneuver. We're just having someone coming over for a judge call at the same time, so yeah, a little thank, distracted. Thank you, Chad, for pointing that out. I'm not even sure how I missed that. I guess I got too caught up in talking about it. And, yeah. uh, but. So despite that mistake, I mean, his, his corrective move is still a decent one. Yeah. Uh, now, he is really forcing if uh, Robin is going to pursue these ships, he yeah. is going to have to turn into the Solar Corona. With the Architons, though, like, you get close enough to them. Does it, I don't know if it really matters if you're in the Solar Corona or not. No, I mean, it's not a huge deal. Yeah. You're going to lose what? You're going to lose at most one, uh, one attack die. So it's like you had a, an obstructed attack or something. So MC-30 is moving, navigate command. Spending it right away. Yep. Well, he has one bank, so yeah, that makes sense. Oh, he has double arc on the Gazanti too? No, I don't think so. He was checking that earlier. I think it's just out of the side arc. Like, it's hard to see. Really? Yeah, it's hard to see, but if you trace the line, it goes somewhere just past the left side of the Gazanti. He was looking at it earlier. What? He was trying to measure it. Okay. Sure. Oh, ooh. It's tough so, because if, that Gazanti ship is in the way. Yeah. But the thing is, okay, so even if it is an arc, if you, you have to, you're actually measuring the range at the point where it crosses. Right. So even if it was an arc, it would be a blue dice. It would be a medium di uh, range shot, yeah. not a close range shot. Uh... I don't think he can. I don't know if he can measure line of sight side to side without going through the front arc of the Gazanti. Well, I, I mean, that, that's what he's checking now. Like so, side arc to side arc is fine. I just don't know if the line of sight is there. So you can cross your own hull zone. Yes, you can. You can't cross the enemy's hull zone. No, it does look awfully close. It doesn't look awfully close. Yeah, I don't. I don't think uh, he's going to get a shot. Robin's just thinking about leaving the ship there, so. Uh, that uh, Eric's Eric's ships crash into it. So yeah, if you leave the Gazanti alone, it creates a bit of a problem for Eric to navigate when he moves his ISD. So Robin's going a bit in the tank here, taking this decision through. All right, so he's going to shoot the flotilla after all, front to front. Just confirming that he's not in the Corona. So, three damage, using his APTs here. Seeing what the face-up card is. So, blinded gunners in the Gazanti. Then takes three damage. So, that's it for the Gazanti. Takes three damage. Uh, it, it takes a total of uh, four damage with the APTs. Oh, he did end up shooting at it, I guess. It's just, it, was, it was the only thing with meaningful dice. It seemed a shame to waste a shot. Uh, well, yeah, Americans. you're right. I mean, and the thing is now that... Um, now that thing is dead. I mean, Eric still technically out-activates Robin in the sense that he has five activations to Robin's five and he is a second player. But now that's one less delay activation that uh, Eric has. Yeah. Of course, now that we're getting into fur balls, uh, into fur ball range, the, um, the ability to out-activate the opponent is less important than priority activations. Right. Yeah, this is an interesting move, too. He's going to try to cut in front of that formation. Um, maybe, like, I don't, think that's, I don't think that's good enough to get into the side arc of the ISD. But I think what I would want to do here is I would want to stay at medium range, perhaps, of the IS, ISD. Although it is an Imperial, too, so it's going to get its full armament at medium range. But, yeah, I would, I would try to cut in front of the... the uh, the Architons, and then next turn, because you activate first, just just activate that first, wipe it out, and then um, 
if not wipe it out, severely damage it, and then uh, continue straight and then turn around Architon's number four. It's, it's still going to be painful because now you're in the side arc of that Architon's, and you also have to be careful about Where is he going here? being right. rammed too much. I don't think he fits. An inside turn fits. See, this is one of the downsides of playing with Maydeen. You play, you play with Medin long enough, and then your ruler becomes super loose because of all the, uh, <laughs> the, the possible moves that you can do with it. I've always said that if, you, if, you're trying to, if you've never played against an opponent that you're paired up with and you want to size up their skill level, ask to borrow their movement ruler and see how loose it is. Yeah. Now, that being said, you could, <laughs> you could definitely hustle somebody by buying a new movement ruler the day before a big tournament, so I don't know how accurate that... Uh, that test is. Yeah. Robin's just ex yeah. Robin's explaining to his opponent. Nav. So the nav plus Maydeen gives him a bunch of extra clicks. He's at speed three. So it looks like he double clicked on joint one using uh, Maydeen and his yaw. And then regular tick on joint two and then joint three. Uh, at speed three, uh, MC30s have a double tick as well. I suspect he's now... His front arc is facing the side, but mm -hmm. it could still be close. So number four activating with a concentrate fire command. And I think he's just deciding whether to use it this turn or not. I think he's got him double arced, right, with that Arkansas? Yeah. Yeah. He's going to shoot with his side arc first. And looks like from the side to the front of the MC-30. Three crits, I think. All right, so he concentrated fire. He's going to TRC. Now, I don't know if he knows this rule, but he has to use Intel Officer as soon as he makes his attack. So I was about to go over the table to explain the rule about uh, when you roll an attack and you have Intel Officer on that ship, you actually have to decide whether or not you're going to exhaust Intel Officer for the effect before you make any modifications to the die roll whether it's through a concentrate fire or a reroll effect. Yep. So you roll your initial pool, and then right away you have to make that decision. Uh, so Robin... I have uh, away one of the crits with the yep. evade. Now Robin let him have it, and ultimately the intel officer didn't do that much on that attack because um, the, the MC-30 has redundant defense tokens. Yes. So whatever you intel, you just use the other one. So front to front? Yep. Ugh. Wow. Yeah, he's at medium though, so he gets to use an evade token to reroll it. And rerolls to one hit. And yeah, Robin just takes the one on the front. Now, if I was Eric, I would probably do a similar strategy to what Derek did in the last round, which is ram the MC30. Yeah, well, that's I'll the best way to kill it. The question is whether or not you can ram it enough before uh, it runs away. And the other thing to consider is that um, Robin is close enough to this station that if you attempt to ram it, you're not successful at killing it. He can just run off the station, start healing damage cards. After making his attack, Eric uh, elects to take the scenic route, uh, trying to get around to the rear end of Robin's line. All right, we'll see what the Karen is going to do here. So Nav spending him right away. Yeah, I would, I would just go after the Architons. I think, I think you can bring your red and blue dice to bear. So uh, three. While staying at long range of the ISD. But yeah, like you said, he's going after number three first. Yeah, they're just checking to see what he has line of sight to, and it looks like the only thing he has line of sight to is the side. So four red plus one with spinal armament, that's a pretty good roll. <laughs> What's that? Six, seven, eight damage? Yeah. With the Mon Karen title, it means that Eric can only use one defense token. So you can either use a uh, an evade or a redirect. So if he uses the evade, he's taking two, three, four, five, six damage on one side, including a crit. Uh, if he uses a redirect, he gets to uh, burn out the shields on two hull zones, but that means he's going to be taking an additional four damage, four damage he with a well crit. Cancel. Yeah, man, Liberty's never performed this way when I fly them. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's he's got the magic touch, Robin. He's the uh, he is the Liberty savant of Toronto. You might use the evade here because you save a uh, hull zone. Yeah, yeah, he does have yeah. XA7s. Good, good call, Jacob. Damn. Actually, wait. 
Yeah, so he'll, evading. He'll kill himself if he uses the. He can't use yeah, the redirect. Yeah, he'll he, die. You're right. He can't. Wow. That that one attack, I think, put Eric in a very uh, uncomfortable position. You take five damage. <laughs> He's doing walking through his yeah, options. Yeah, here. yeah. Robin's trying to tell him if you if you use a redirect, then yeah. So four, five, six damage, right? So let's find out what the face-up da face damage card is. If it's a structural, he's dead. So the uh, the critical was depowered armament, which is you cannot attack at long range. I don't think that was going to be an issue. Well, I mean, if that thing survives, it can only shoot at the, um, the MC-30 from now on, right? It's too far away from the Mon I, I, I don't think it's going to have an opportunity to shoot. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So Robin, I think he wants to stay out of medium range of that ISD. I think what I would do actually is I, I juke off to the left and then try to come in around the side of the, uh, the architants. Like that, that one roll puts you in such a good position that now it, it's completely viable to take out the, uh, the architants and leave the ISD alone. So just for additional context, both of these players going into this round had nine points. Uh, so they did really well on, on round one. Yep. So, which, which also means that they don't have to take too, merit, too many unnecessary risks in order to have a shot at uh, coming in first place if they do well in their third round as well as winning this one. So that maneuver puts um, Robin just out of medium range of that ISD. So very good piloting by Robin there. One thing to note is that with that maneuver, uh, I think Robin is definitely now within the Solar Coronas effect. But, I mean, if you roll 8 damage and no accuracy, that solar chrono doesn't really matter. So shots are easy part. Deciding where to land is a bit I, more I think you, I think you have to move the ISD first. You, you, I think you got to fork here. You, gotta, you move the ISD so you threaten both the MC-30 and the Mon Karen. Robin's squads, meanwhile, having a cup of coffee back at the Rebel HQ. I know. This is, uh, <laughs> this is a half day for them. I mean, it seems like somewhat of a token force. Is it really just more of a fighter screen that he's playing with? Or? Yeah, the purpose of Robin's uh, screen. So just for people that aren't aware what Robin's uh, uh, fighter composition, it's called a Bigs Ball. So it's two X-Wings, uh, Bigs, Dark Lighter, and Jan. So the, all X-Wings have the escort keyword, yep. which is if, if an enemy squadron is engaged with an escort squadron, has to shoot an escort squadron. Biggs' ability is, it's kind of weird, but it's, um, so when a squadron with escort at distance one of Biggs takes any damage from an attack, prevent one of those damage, then a, another squadron at distance one of Biggs takes one damage instead. So you can use Biggs to move damage around, right. thereby increasing the uh, longevity of your firepower, mm -hmm. right? When, when the castle falls, it all falls at once, obviously, because right. you spread all the damage around. But until that happens, it's actually very annoying because you can't, like, target one right. ship and kill it. Now, the linchpin to that combo, actually, is uh, Jan, because Jan has, uh, in addition to her intel ability, has an ability that uh, she has two brace tokens, and she can spend her brace tokens... Um, on the behalf of another friendly squadron at distance one to two. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is, uh, against a, a big fighter force, your opponents are forced to fight, shoot escort squadrons. Right. You can use, gen like say an opponent attacks, deals three damage to a generic X-Wing. Normally it doesn't have any defense tokens. Jan can use a brace token to cancel one of those, like brace it down to two. Right. And then Biggs can move one of those damages to like a healthy X-Wing. Yeah. So it's very hard to target down a single X-Wing that way. And the idea is you, you can gum up a superior fighter force long enough that your ships end up killing their right. ships before that happens. So side of the Architect is to the front of uh, the long turn. Remember to use the Intel Officer right away this time. Turns off the redirect. And the TRC turns that to a double hit. This braces and takes two to the front. With five shields on the front of that, it's going to take a long time to crack. Um, Nebula, sorry, not Nebula. Uh, Liberties are deceptively fragile. Uh, the two brace tokens do make it annoying to deal, to to kill it with big attacks. But if you can line up a bunch of small attacks on a on a Liberty, it's uh, it's actually fairly trivial to take down a, right. a Liberty. 
because unlike a lot of other big ships, they don't have a contain token unless you take a specific title, which gives you a contain token. Um, once you start chewing through, especially the weaker side hulls, right. which have only have two shields on the side, um, you can start dealing a lot of crits to, uh, to Liberty and cripple it very quickly. Which is why, um, and in addition, Liberties they don't have a very good um, speed chart. Right? They're not very maneuverable as far as big ships go, which is why Maydeen is very important, because that maneuverability keeps you out of dangerous arcs and situations, and that allows you to leverage the superior firepower for longer yeah. while uh, reducing its weaknesses. So yeah, now the trouble is he now has to move that ship, um, and he might end up getting in the way of his uh, ISD with this maneuver. Yeah, so it feels like the question for the ISD is whether he's just going to take a damage from the asteroid or yeah. a damage from the asteroid and a bump. I mean, Jirgerod can mitigate that um, by doing some unexpected maneuvers, but what, what he might actually do here is use his own Architons as a speed bump. Like, if, he, if he's yeah. going to concede the fact that he's going to bump his Architons anyway, he might as well use it to uh, manage the distance between uh, the enemy Mon Karen and his own ISD. I mean, if he, if the Archon is going to end up be behind the uh, ISD. I mean, it might not be targeted for a while. You're talking about number two? Yeah. I don't know. I would go after the Architons first if I was the Mon Karen. Uh, yeah, this, this, he's just using his guy as a blockade, really. The critical uh, that Eric got was a life support failure, which is discard all your command tokens. You cannot have any command tokens. Yeah, that, that maneuver definitely looks like he's using it to keep his ISD in place there for one more turn. Looking for an unobstructed shot towards the MC-30, perhaps. Looks like it's unobstructed at the front. Yeah. And it is, It'll be obstructed out of the back. Out of the side, sorry. Yeah, I think he's also looking for a double arc shot, seeing, seeing what his side arc, which I also think is obstructed. Yeah, yeah is, these are one of those times where lasers are actually kind of unreliable. Because when you, when you, use, a, when you use a laser to determine a, a straight line, if you're holding it at an angle, it actually bends the light beam yeah. a little bit. Which can make for inaccuracies, in addition to uh, you know just the shaking of like certain some people, their hands aren't very steady when you're holding something uh, at a certain angle. Doesn't look like the side arc can see um, Robin's side arc. Eric's gonna go after the MC30 here, starting with the side arc to the front of the, uh, Robin's MC30. It's gonna be medium range, gonna That's be started. obstructed. Yep. He's gonna lose. Uh, it looks like a blue he lost. Yeah. And so Robin Robin reminding Eric that he is indeed in the Corona with his side arc, so he does lose that accuracy right away. And with the XI-7s, that's going to prevent Robin from redirecting too much of it. XI-7s is the reason why you don't really see a lot of advanced projectors anymore. And so funnily enough, uh, Robin is running advanced projectors on his, on his MC-30. It's one of those few times where that interaction is actually uh, significant. So it does use the projectors at least to move it onto the back mm -hmm. instead of one of the sides. So one in the front, one in the back. So here we go with the front. Four red, four blue. Oh. And is that an accuracy? I don't think so. It looks like a bunch of crits. Yeah. Doesn't eight. look like any blanks. Yeah, eight eight hits. I mean, not as great as Robin's roll, but... Yeah. I, I, Eric is pondering using leading shots here. Maybe fishing for an accuracy? I don't know if I would do that against MC30. Here comes Lando on Robin's MC30. Going to make him re-roll a bunch of... Yeah, a bunch of reds. Uh, Jacob says 8 damage times XI7 equals dead MC30. That would be true if uh, Robin did not have Lando Calrissian as well as the admonition title. Right. So Lord of Britannia is asking in chat about the Corona Factor. So, I mean, if you're just looking for the ruling, if the arc you're shooting out of has the... Uh, right hand side of the table in arc then you're going to lose yeah. the first, lose an accurate accurate dice from your attack pull if able yeah so whatever side was designated the solar corona side at the start of the game if if you can if if your arc has that side in in arc right no matter what the distance is yeah. even if it's beyond the long range uh, when you roll your initial attack, before you make any modifications, if there is any accuracy result, you have to remove one of them. It's a popular, it's a popular uh, objective because, in addition to that, it uh, it has the superior positions, um, it has a superior position setup thing. So you get the same thing. Life support failure. Yep. Yeah. Looks like one HP left. 
I, it wasn't that the last game that Lando actually did absolutely nothing as well. Oh, did he make it worse last game? No, it was no, the it was exact just, same role because there was one double hit in that role, and then it ended up being the exact same role. Yeah. I mean, that, them's a break. Sometimes Lando is a lifesaver, right? Like, yes. it's it's it can save it can save your bacon enough times that it, it's worth it. It's just the trade off is that some of those times, um, yeah, it doesn't really do that much at all. It, it tends to be better against attacks that have a lot of like black dice. For example, if you're rolling a lot of double hits on black dice, black dice and red dice, I find the Lando's uh, ability is uh, is a lot better. Now, Eric, he's looking to ram. He can't ram because if coming back that dial yep. overlaps the Arcantins, yep. so he's going to end up back where he started. Man, that that sucks, right? That that position that Arcantins kind of screwed him a bit. Now, that actually might that might work. If he's able to do that, but I, yeah, that definitely will. Yeah, yeah, because if he does that, then at least the, um, yeah. So he's gonna Jer Gerard on joint one, gives him a double tick. Then he, because he did a nav command, he's gonna double tick on joint two, and he's going at speed three. So he rams the MC thirty, walks back to the two. It doesn't look like he overlaps the Architons. Doesn't look like he overlaps the uh, no. the Mon Karen either. Very well played by Eric. Nice. So taking some pot shots with the X-Wings now that the uh, ISD is in range. Despite losing that MC-30, I think Robin can still uh, pull this off. If he kills Arkatins number two and Arkatins number three, that's enough points to put him over the top. Unfortunately, the margin of victory is not going to be uh, very high if he does that, but that is still a victory for him. Like, like I was saying earlier in this match, it's, it's really showcasing the maneuverability of the two admirals of either faction that care yeah. the most about maneuverability, right? The, the amount of crazy situations I've seen Jerjerod get an Icedy out of. <laughs> yeah, so basically that Lando reroll, if he just, one of those dice changed. That, that was like the turning point of the game. And not so much that the outcome has been decided one way or the other, but like Robin was saying, talking, selling Eric, if he, if that Lando roll worked out better for him, he would have killed uh, Arkansas number three, run away, locked up those points, the we would have a lot of damage on something else. Too. Yeah, and then the Mon Karen follows up and kills uh, Architons number two. That's still probably going to happen. This is only this is the top of turn three right now. Yeah, uh, yeah it's probably going to happen, but the margin of victory is going to be a lot more narrow this time. Now it would have been nice. I mean, it's very unlikely that he has. I mean, maybe he has a squadron on the Mon Karen. Right. Because uh, there's only one damage left on number three. If he could get rid of that with a fighter. That would be pretty nice. So, so what he could do, actually, I mean, he could he could program a squadron command with his flotilla, and then oh. use that to to attack the Architons. Uh, or yeah. are you talking about this turn? I'm talking about this turn. Yeah, he hasn't activated anything yet, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if he programs a squadron command, which they both have command one, he can do that. Oh, right they're now. they're. I mean, because yeah. like the cruisers obviously, or the transports will for sure, but. To get that first strike with a liberty to maybe get both two and three. Uh, Lord of Britannia is asking if Empire played with squadrons or only with big ships. Uh, Eric's list has no squadrons in it. It's only ships. So he had three Architons. Uh, all of them were kitted out the same way with TRCs and Intel Officer. And he had one Gazanti with Comsnet. And he has that big uh, Imperial 2 with a bunch of stuff on it. Rowan's just trying to... He, he could make a legitimate shot at one, two, or three here with his Mon Care and he's just trying to decide what he wants to do. So engineering spends a dial right away, puts some shields back in the front of the Mon Karen. Now we'll see who he's decided to shoot at. Looks like he's going after Arkatins number two. Yeah. With the spinal armaments and Catherine and Cholin, Kate and Kate Ken and Kate yeah. Ken and Cholin. He can one shot two here. This is a medium range shot, right? Yeah. Looks like? Yeah. yeah. And it's not obstructed, I guess not? It's not obstructed. Robin just has to remember Solar Corona. Corona. Yep, he does. I don't think it matters, though. Well, he has Kadek in the shoulder. He can reroll the two red. He's rerolling the two blanks. Yeah. So yep. crit and some other and damage. One damage? Yeah. So hitting the hitting the evade with the accuracy on that looks like seven damage coming through. So with the redirect, he's going to be taking seven. He's going to go down to one HP. Of course, of course, if he gets uh, if he gets a, 
if it's structural damage as his face up, then that's it for him. Yeah, okay, so that the crit was indeed a structural damage. So that's that's enough to kill the Architan. So that was a pretty lucky break for Robin. I mean, he could have had better. He, his dice roll could have been a little bit better as well. Like with that attack, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, Robin. It was saying pretty good, actually. That was a, that was a bit of karma for uh, whiffing on um, on Lando there. Yeah. So side on the ISD now, side to side. Uh, just a measly three on the ISD. Still full shields on that side of the ISD though, so I don't I don't think there's a lot of concern about that thing dying just yet. So two two damage. Uh, Use the brace there. What was what was the command that uh, Robin did? Yeah, uh, engineering. Engineering. I see. Restored some shields to the front. Yeah. Wow. Robin, Robin's even considering running over the rock just to get a good shot on that Architons. That's pretty crazy. Well, also just to make a meaningful, like, to come around to be able to pursue in case he needs some more points. Well, he needs at least five more points. <laughs> I mean, theoretically, he's going to be killing some more stuff. Yeah. But there's a reasonable chance he's going to be losing some transports as well. Th that's true. However, um, he also could be just fishing for... Yeah. If he can get in a good position where he can actually chase down the ISD, if he's behind the ISD, right. ISD can't really get away. Whoa, I can't believe he actually made that move. So now he's actually thinking about uh, using engine techs here to see if he wants to ram the ISD for some damage. And that looks like it only he's only in the back arc of the ISD. Yep. Not only is he in the back arc, it looks like he's double arced his opponent. Uh, but the, the that ISD has tough a... to say. The base could be... Well, but it's got to move. Yeah. So, well, I mean, it, so he does have Jerry. So who knows what he can do? But the funny thing so is, engine tech. He yeah. does engine tech. Two damage to both of those ships. Funny thing is, uh, so he he has those two flotillas dead to rights, but his front arc is now in the solar corona. So, which means he's going to need to roll two accuracies to lock down the scatter of the right. the GR seventy five. So, with a little bit of luck, uh, it's possible that that Robin's flotillas can escape. Engineering command with the ISD in a conjunction oh. with the engineering tokens, that's going to be six engineering Why? points. Why? I, no, I, well, because there's a r real chance that three dies with uh, an activation with a squadron command here. I'm just saying, like, I would want to get my action with three before it died. Ah, uh, I see, yes. Well, what he might be trying to do is he might be trying to kill the, the flotilla he suspects is, has a squadron command. Right. It's risky because... But wouldn't, wouldn't, both, you, wouldn't you put it on both? That's what I would do. Yeah. I mean, you, you have four squadrons and each of your flotillas can activate two of them, so right. it makes sense. You're right, it is risky. But I mean, you have, yeah, if you have all your tokens, then... The, the ISC has gunnery team, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, right. Sorry, he can kill both of them. Never mind. Yep. Uh, it's dead. Yeah. <laughs> so he did roll the two accuracies. I forgot about the gunnery team here. Yep. So there's a lucky break for Eric. That's like 26-something plus points there. Yeah. Now, unfortunately... Oh. So the second one, he, he only gets one accuracy. And... He's going to use leading shots of fish for another accuracy. I don't think he could. Yeah, it was, it was cocked. And he doesn't get an accuracy with the leading shots. So he's going to get scattered. At this point, I can't tell um, who's, what's, who Solar Corona has screwed over more. I feel like it's been Eric. Well, yeah, it's Eric now. because that Yeah. That, that's, one of the, that's one of the hidden pitfalls of Solar Corona. Because if you get into a turning fight with your opponent... Like, on turns one, two, and three, you have the advantage. But once you turn around, it seems like in the last half of the game, uh, you're the one in the Solar Corona. To be fair, the reason it screwed him over more is because the admonitions died. What do you mean? Like, I think it would have affected admonition had it uh, still been alive. I see. Because I think both arcs would have... Well, no, it depends which side arc it fired out of. See, the, the other problem is, you, you mentioned you should have activated three now. But like, what what's gonna happen now when he activates three? He can't uh, he can't get out of the way of his uh, ISD. He rams it. Doesn't he just kill himself? Yeah. I mean, he could jerry his way out. It's always possible. Yeah, I don't know that there's a way to jerry his way out of that one, but we'll see.
Oh, never mind. Yeah, no problem for him to get in there. No problem for the ISD, right? Uh, no problem for, for the, the Architons. Architons to get around now. Yeah, squad command with a token gives him three squadron activations. He's going to make a beeline for the Architons. Yeah. So one health left in the Architons, number three, but he's got two redirect tokens still. Yeah. So he can... He can, uh, I think he can withstand a bomber assault for this turn at least. So the question is, do you put that, start putting that damage on the ISD to make sure the mind carrying can chase it down? I think, I think Robin's plan has to include killing the ISD now. Uh, if he kills the Architons, that puts Robin, I forget how much, 54 points for Architons, plus TRC and Intel officers, another 14, so that's 68. Well, he's going to lose another transport for sure. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking, right? So 68. Well, that still puts Robin in the lead if he doesn't lose anything else. But that margin is not very high. I think that's going to end up in a 6-5 if he, if the, nothing else happens than the other than the uh, Arkansas dying. But looks like he's going out to the Arkansas. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the weakness of the big ball bomber screen. It's red dice. Even with bomber, red dice aren't very consistent. Yeah. There you go. There's is that a two. double hit. Yep. Now does that hmm does that completely drain the shields from any side of Jason that side? Yeah. Looks like there's zero on the front, zero on the side, one on the back. So actually, if he rolls one more double hit, I think that kills him. Oh, no. Is he going to go for the safe bet of Jan and Black Dice? No, I think you go for the double hit here. Yeah, yeah. Shoot the side. You got to shoot the side. You can shoot the side from there, so. No, he, he's going to shoot the front. Maybe maybe the side has one damage. Yeah. He needs to roll double here. Nope. Nope. Now, this does still leave Jan a shot at the Erica 10s at the end of the round. Yeah, but Jan can only do at most one damage. She doesn't have bombers, so the black die can only deal one damage per attack. I mean, if if Eric doesn't can't get out of the way of the ice tea, then that's a problem. Engineering on that Arctans. I believe that's an engineering value of three. It is. So he can either heal one damage card, uh, repair a shield and move a shield, or move three shields. So, so it looks like he, he redirects the one shield from the right side to the front and then repairs one shield on the left side. That puts him one shield on every side? Yeah. Ne well, he, so now there's zero shields on the right side because he moved okay. that shield to the uh, front. Deals a couple more damage into the front of Robin's uh, Mon Karen. Two flat cannons. So there's one to one of the X-Wings. Now the question is, where does he put himself so he's not in the side arc from uh, the Mon Karen? I don't, I don't think there's anywhere he can put himself here. Coming up on the 30 minute ma mark left in the game. Kind of sucks for Robin because now he's got to basically waste a big attack on it just to kill it. Uh, I mean, I think it's going to have to put itself in the side arc for the Moncaren. Oh, I so see that what it's going to be a free attack. I mean, unless do, do we know here. how many defense tokens are left on that ship? No. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think he had to use that much. Yeah, because if like, he, I don't has, he had, to, I don't think he had to discard any uh, redirects. Did he use two? Do, does he have a evade token still? Uh, yeah, Cause, yeah, because that, that's the thing, right? If he. Even if he's in the side arc of a Mon Karen, if he's at long range, he only gets one, two red dice, I think. Would he be at long range? I don't know if he'd be at long range. If he does that maneuver, I think that's, that puts yeah. him at long range. I mean, I think it's, he kind of almost has to do something like that. Yeah. I guess it is long range. That's, that's actually good for Eric because now uh, it leaves his weakest sides ex exposed. Like, sorry, his exposed side is now facing away from the Mon Karen. Uh, and he did dodge the front arc there, looks like. But <laughs> that well, I mean, lets Robin, Robin park was his... Not, Robin was yeah. not going to spend his front arc on that ship. Yeah. 
I think Robin has to kill the ISD. So. Yep. And and the thing is, he can he can just send the um, he can just send the you can just send the squadrons after the damaged Arkitans. Robin's pointing out that Eric did not take his Jerry damage. He's gonna put it on the far side from uh, Jan. So the ISD is missing, uh, I believe, two shields on the left hand side. Uh, other than that, oh no, and it's taken two damage from uh, the double bump. So it's got two hull damage and two shield off the left side. I think that's it. Oh, so there's two yeah. hull damage on it and two off the left hand side, I thought. Yeah, two hull damage on it and the one shield left on the front. Uh, one shield left on the rear. Two on the right side and three on the left side. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's fairly healthy still. I mean, that can change once the Mon Karen starts firing at it. Well, it's going to be able to fire and yeah. probably double tap again in terms uh, of double bump. The, the Mon Karen, you mean? Yeah, sorry, but double bump instead of double tap. Yeah, yeah, he, he can use, the, uh, he can use the, um, the attacks in the combination with uh, the engine text bumping. He just needs to be careful about getting himself to a point where uh, both the Architans and the ISD can attack back and kill it. Hedgemex says the MC-80 has less health for ramming. Yeah, it's true, but if you're using it in concert with the uh, with the attack from the front arc of the Mon Karen, it's feasible that you can uh, you can kill the ISD before ramming kills you. Now that Eric actually turned back towards the Mon Karen, um, an alternate strategy for Robin could be that just uh, take both those Arkansans. Yeah, he could now he could turn in. I mean, he's got Maydean. He can turn in towards two Arkansans, just take those two out. That might even be enough for a seven-four victory. So squad, squadron phase, Jen. Jen's just going to bomb the side of that Arkitans. And one damage. One damage. Well, that's going to burn a redirect. I think that's a discarded redirect. Yeah. I, I should have checked when I was over there, but I can't tell if the flotilla is in the side arc of the ISD only or if it's also in the front arc. Of the which one? Of the ISD, if the flotilla. If Robin's flotilla is in the oh. side or the front arc of the ISD. That's actually significant, if, uh, depending on what it is. I actually think uh, it, Robin's first activation should be a flotilla. You, you command uh, squadrons. You kill the... You kill Arkitans number three, and then when you activate your Mon Karen, you're going to turn hard into Arkitans number four. You should be able to kill it before turn six. It's, I think it's mathematically possible to kill the ISD, but it's a far safer bet to go after the Arkitans instead. The ISD is not... Well, after it makes its next move, it might kill the Flotilla, but it, I don't think it's going to be in a position to do anything for the rest of the game. Right. So you can, uh, you can break off and concentrate on killing the two Arkitans instead. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know that it's necessary to go with the flotilla first to do that. The, the worry is that the flotilla will die before it has a chance to activate. But, but you're going to get a better you're going to get a better chance of killing the Arkitans with the Mon Karen anyways. I don't think so. I think you have a better chance of killing it with the squadrons. You think so? Yeah. Um, so that we've already established that the Mon Karen can only shoot Arkitans number three from the side. Right. Right, and it has an evade token. It's possible you you end up rolling terribly on your side, yeah, right? So I heard Squad Command. Yeah. Is he actually activating the flotilla? Squad Command. Ooh, into the back. Yep, that's a good one because now he can't. If he if he had a redirect, yeah, he, he can't can. redirect. To All the he has front. to do is hit here. Yeah, and he doesn't. I would I would have used Jan here, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I, J Jan is the correct. Uh, a squad to activate here, I think. Because you have a 75% chance to hit, and you just need one hit to kill it. But it looks like he's going to well, go un with unless the... He was activate, unless he is actually activating the Monk yeah. Karen, but... Oh, that's true. Then he wouldn't be able to... Uh... <laughs> uh, I heard it was a double, double hit. hit. Right. Yeah, right. okay. <laughs> of course, the killing blow is overkill. Oh, yeah, it, was, it was a flotilla that Robin flotilla. activated. Actually, this is good for uh, this is good for Robin too. So Robin, with that kill, jumps ahead to 161 points. 
uh, still a 6-5 victory if nothing else changes. Uh, however, I think the proper strategy now for Robin is to abandon the ISD kill and then go hard on Arkansas number four. Um, well, one theoretical reason why you keep Jan, you don't activate Jan there, is Jan could potentially have a free shot at uh, the Arkansas I see. number four when it moves. That's smart. I would just be paranoid about whiffing twice on my X wings. That's fair. Yeah, looks like looks like the flotilla is only in the side arc of the ISD, so that's why he's going to shoot at. Uh, Yep, after okay. seeing the scatter, that kills it. And fortunately for Eric, he is not in the solar corona for that arc. And now with a gunnery team, uh, well, he had the opportunity to flak, but he's going to choose instead to do a medium range shot at the front arc of the MC 80. So I believe that one's one red. Oh, I guess it was long range. Redirects it to his right hand side. Yep. Uh, Jarek, no, uh, Eric is the. Imperial player. So, so for our overlay, the name on the right corresponds with the list that is uh, justified towards the bottom of the screen, and then the the name on the left is the one that corresponds to the list that's justified towards the top of the screen. Shooting some flock with uh, number four Architons. Looks like he's just out of flak range for bigs. Not at the front, anyway. Yeah. I mean, all of those things, wow. they think, think how a bunch of See, and now, now the interesting thing is actually, um, wonder if Eric can do enough damage to the squadrons to kind of scare them off their bombing run. If, if not necessarily kill them. Because if, let's say Eric kills Biggs, that's going to actually put Eric in the lead by one point. 143 plus 19 is 153, 162. Yeah, that's hilarious. Oh, he's strategic advisor, didn't he? No. He oh. must have, because he, uh, he didn't move his, his Mon Karen, right. and, and Eric has activated both ships. Why wouldn't he have strategic? Why wouldn't have Eric strategic? Yeah. Because, so, uh, actually, I have no idea why. Okay. I, he might have <laughs> just forgotten. Yeah. I was going to say, like, maybe he was trying to kill the flotilla as soon as possible, but that flotilla had already activated, so he could have taken his time to strategic. Well, I just mean he could have done this now yeah. instead of activating the Arctons. Yeah. Looks like Robin did a engineering command with the Liberty. I don't think he has a navigate command, so... Because of that, I don't think he's able to turn hard enough to threaten the Architons. Engineering. Two more shields in the front of the Mon Karen. Uh, I think Robin's regretting being a little bit too conservative with his commands. Robin's just going back there. He's recovering a hull and moving one of the shields from the right-hand side to the front. Yeah, it doesn't look like he has any shots. Uh, without any navigation tokens or anything like that, he can't do any crazy maneuvers. Ends up running over the rock. We'll see what the uh, critical is. Oh, well, calm noise is the critical. No, sorry, not calm noise. It's the one where your opponent chooses uh, two hull zones and each of those lose one shield. I forget what it's called. Some shield failure thing. I think it's literally called shield failure. <laughs> So, so now with that maneuver, I think uh, the Architons is safe. Don't think the ISD... I don't think there's enough turns left. Yeah, I don't think the ISD has, has enough turns to go down to the thing. <laughs> he's, uh, he's trying to trying to get some edge. Yeah, at this point, I think, I think at this point they're just going to play it out. I mean, Double John says it's been a good game. I think this, this game had a lot of uncertainty as to who was actually going to come out on top. Um, ended up being a very close game. Uh, the margin of victory is like literally one bigs away from switching uh, momentum from one side to the other. A lot of us are waiting to see exactly why we had to wait so long for an announcement, which was promised 
to be revealed at Gen Con for Star Wars Armada, what the, what the future holds for that. Hopefully it's a good future. I think we'll see at least one more product. And then hopefully it gives, gives us a better idea of what the longer term Yeah, looks I've, like. I've heard rumors that they're, in addition to whatever this product coming out is, is there's also, they're also working on another campaign similar okay. to the Corellian Conflict. And uh, the Corellian Conflict was really cool in, in theory, but I think uh, my personal opinion suffered from some fundamental balance issues where if you had skill disparity between both players or teams... Uh, one side snowballed very quickly. Yeah, I don't think the kind of the strategy portion was all that interesting. Mm -hmm. The decision, like the decisions, were pretty obvious. Yep. There was no, didn't feel like there was any subtlety uh, in the decisions that you were making. Right. It yeah. Just like basically pick the most points. But some of the tokens were useful, mostly yeah. not enough to take fewer points. Yeah, r repair yards I think were a little bit overpowered. And uh, despite the whole system of like scarring ships and then losing them permanently yeah. if they got attacked again, the problem is because repair yards were so powerful, um, most of the time, especially uh, a team that was winning, it was very hard for them to actually lose anything of significance. Yeah. So um, if the rumors are to be believed and there is another expansion coming, uh, it'd be really interesting to see what they've learned from the Corellian conflict and. Uh, how they decide to implement those lessons in any possible future campaign expansions. Right now the players are discussing um, <laughs> whether or not it, there's any point to continue the, the rest of the match. Doesn't look like uh, either player can kill anything else before the end of the turn. So I think they're so just all the squadrons just yeah. shift over out of range. Yep. Well, they will after the ISD moves. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that's a win for Robin. So they're going to call it here. Yeah. Uh, we do have the point totals. It's been relatively bug-free in terms of the point calculations. Uh, so I'm pretty confident. Yeah. I just want to give a huge shout out to my streaming partner Travis. He is 100% responsible for all the overlay elements that you see on screen, not just for Star Wars or Armada, but for every other uh, FFG game that we cover. Uh, I think that these overlay elements add a uh, significant professional finish to all our all our uh, streams, and uh, I think they've been received very well by the by the audience as well. So, one side we got the number right, so definitely 143 from Eric, and I'm pretty sure it's the 161. Looking at looking on the ships, uh, pretty confident. We've got it.